and it's headphones nail. What's up guys, welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews, I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you the latest set of reviews for all the stuff that I've been watching, playing, and all of that good stuff. Now that I'm mostly better, um, I should start ramping up on the gameplay videos and reviews and all of that good stuff. So for this particular review, it's going to be still a little bit of catch up, not too much. I did end up watching a lot more stuff than I planned, um, but I am starting to get back into my gameplay um, stuff uploading and all that so I'll get to that towards the end of the episode but with that being said I did have a chance to watch House of the Dragon season 2 episode 7 we have um, Rhaenyra catching up on trying to find more dragon riders so they can tip the balance of power into their favor um, she does get one guy who picked gets one of the dragons and then the other dragon playfully gets another guy so now that she has um, three dragons are on her side versus Aemon. Um, at the moment, not, and not having read any of the books, it does look like she does have more power. He, Aemon is trying to go and attack them to see what's up, and he turns back because he is overpowered. Um, the episode did bring us two very beautiful shots, notably in the form of Rhaenyra in front of the dragon turning around as the dragon comes out of the shadow, and then the other one is her standing at, outside of Dragonstone in front of the two dragons while the other one is flying around. So that one I did post up on my, the, my Twitter account, or, or actually all my social media accounts. Um, but I thought those two scenes were particularly well shot. The second one at Dragonstone was a little bit weird because the dragon that was in the foreground next to Renero was kind of oddly shaped and it reminded me of the Captain Kirk fight from Star Trek the original series. So that was kind of weird, but that aside on the serious note, um, I thought that was shot was beautiful, so um, I can't wait to see what we get in the Season 2 finale of House of the Dragon. Um, otherwise this week I did have a chance to watch um, quite a bit of other media, so I did finish watching The Karate Kid um, Part 2 and 3, and then the 2010 um, um, Karate Kid with Jackie Chan, so um, overall, too, I liked, I didn't remember a lot of it, I do remember Chosen, and some scenes here and there I did, I remembered, but for the most part I had, it was drawing a blank on the movie, so I was questioning myself as to if I even saw the full movie, or was it something I saw on TV, or did I only catch bits and pieces over the years? Um, and then for the third one, it was a similar thing, I remembered a little bit more of it, it was kind of, you know, Daniel going down the dark side, having an argument with Mr. Miyagi about training. Um, we have, um, what's his name, the bad boy of karate in there. Um, I do remember Terry Silver, so maybe it's one of those things where I saw that a little bit more often, or that one just stood out more than the second one. But regardless, now that we have that, and a lot of that's already been resolved in Cobra Kai, so I don't know if they're going to have too much there, but um, most of my thoughts now relate to the 2010 Karate Kid with Jackie Chan. So I thought that the film was okay. I mean, it felt like the first Karate Kid in a lot of ways. You have a kid moving to a new city with his mom, going to a new school, uh, falling in love with a girl, getting picked on by bullies who are part of a rival um, karate school or kung fu school. Um, so essentially, the 2010 Karate Kid is the same as the first Karate Kid. Uh, except you don't have a Mr. Miyagi, um, you have a Mr. Han, you have the uh, Dragon Karate School versus Cobra Kai, which is a snake, and things like that. So, you know, aside from little differences like that, the 2010 Karate Kid is pretty much the same as the first one, to the point where it looked like they were going to try and reboot the franchise for a new generation, a younger generation, or something like that. And they didn't, maybe it didn't take off as much as they expected, or... Um, they didn't get as much, like it maybe it did well enough, but it not well enough to make any sequels. But for me, it's one of those things where, and I'll sh on Rotten Tomatoes, it did better than average 66 and 67% with the audience and um, critics. So not terrible, but not great. So I think that's one of those things where they didn't do good enough to um, make sequels. But 
For me, as far as the 2010 Cobra Kai goes, or 2010 Karate Kid goes and related to Cobra Kai, I almost have a feeling that, um, and actually before I move on, I also had a chance to watch the next Karate Kid with um, Hilary Swing, which I didn't have anything ne um, negative about. Um, that overall was fun or a good movie. I enjoyed it. We still have Mr. Miyagi. I liked the, you know, throughout the film how he kept talking about how it was easier to train Daniel and he had fewer questions and all of that. So it kind of looked like they were going to make a franchise out of having different karate kids with him. But with it, you know, with age being a factor and all that, it's probably hard to do that. So, um, regardless, um, my theory now is that with the remaining two parts for Cobra Kai, part of me wonders if they're going to include the next Karate Kid and, and make that the part two um, stinger that have Hillary Swank show up and, um, you know, join the ranks of um, Miyagi-Do where they where she trains with them and trains them because she's had experience with that military guy. They need someone who's also a military mind like um creases so something along those lines and then the third part is going to make a connection with the next karate kid where we learn that the events of the next karate kid is that the dragon karate school is actually the precursor to cobra kai and um miyagi do is actually related to how or related to the karate and kung fu that uh, mr han learned and is part of another school that splintered off from um the same school or maybe like you know that the the dragon karate was actually um passive there was a split in teachings and then the guy who's a teacher took in that, that direction and then the splinter school for what the lady that crease has teamed up with is kind of like a top gun for um cobra kai or something like that where the best of the best go there from the dragon school or something like that and then you have, you know, individual schools or other schools show up in the form of, you know, Miyagi-Do and various other more passive or pacifist style versions of um, that same karate where, you know, that's why the Miyagi-Do is a very strong and powerful counter to Cobra Kai because they're part of the same teaching and all that. Um, I don't know how they're going to tie, or I don't have a guess really as far as how they're going to tie all of that into the Sekai Tekai, how, uh, how, why Mr. Miyagi fought there. Maybe um, he was part of that school, he was a top student, and he fought there, you know, before the splinter, you know, that's why he's not there anymore. He was part of that school, got into some big fights, and he was running away from that. Maybe he was a part of the Dragon School and part of, you know, the Dragon Karate or original Cobra Kai or something, and... Um, that's why he opted for a more passive approach and he didn't want to live that life anymore. So, um, it seemed like they, they could go in a few different directions, but tie that all together where, um, they tie in all the various films and then they, you know, bring in the stingers of the different people, connect all the dots and, um, close it out to, um, tie that all together, you know, preserve Mr. Miyagi's legacy, explain the schools and all these different uh, you know, the kind of light side, dark side of these karate schools and all of that different stuff. Um, so with that being said, the only other thing that I had a chance to watch this week was Bad Boys Ride or Die. It's available for streaming now, so I, th I thought I'd finally get around to watching it. And overall, I really enjoyed the film. I mean, for a fourth film in the franchise, I wasn't sure what to expect. I don't remember much about the... Um, third film, so I do actually kind of want to go back and watch that. I've seen the first two um, enough times where I remember those. But, you know, you have a lot of good th elements in the film. You have, I think, probably the best showing of um, what's his name in the film, uh, Martin Lawrence. I thought his co uh, comedy and acting were top notch in this film. It was probably the most memorable and best out of the prior three. I mean, the prior three were good. I like his comedy to begin with, but this one really just stood out. It worked really well. You have a, a budding relationship with Will Smith and his son. Um, they're trying to redeem their captain's name and all of that, so good stuff there. And overall, you know, usual action is very formulaic. It's not too different from prior films, but, um, but you know, it's still a good time. It's very well done. It's along the veins of the prior film so it's definitely a good time 
Um, you have you still have uh, Will Smith driving around in a Porsche. Uh, get you have both of them getting into a lot of trouble. Um, I like that uh, Reggie was still there, and we learned that he's in, or he's now um, enlisted in the military. And the stuff that he pulls in the film when he's protecting the ladies is uh, gets it gets um, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence to finally appreciate and respect him. So. All in all, a good film. I enjoyed it. Definitely recommend uh, watching it. So, I actually kind of hope that they do um, have more films in the um, franchise and they kind of keep going with it. They are building up a new team, but I kind of make it to, or kind of hope they do something along the lines where um, they maybe make Will Smith and Martin Lawrence captains or sergeants or. Well, I guess they're detectives, so that would be a weird thing to do, but uh, maybe make them captains or promote them into a special investigative unit or something along those lines where they um, now lead teams, get them off the street for the whole thing with the insurance and the city and damage and all that and um, start their own, maybe even go back to the academy and start training new students and how they do stuff. So. Um, all in all, a good film. I definitely recommend watching it. It was a good film, you know, Will Smith stuff notwithstanding, but I do recommend watching the film. Uh, so with that being said, I had, did have a chance to play a Roller Coaster Tycoon map. I had a chance to play Diamond Heights. Um, I'm putting an asterisk on this gameplay just because it's one of those maps that is a uh, park value map where you have to have your park reach a certain value. Um, and I always have trouble with those in getting that, you know, getting to that park value. I either just fall short or the uh, ride values start to plummet quite a bit, so I can never um, beat the level. So in the sh um, show notes, I do mention the video and the guy that uh, tipped me off with a way to work around that. So what I did in this case is what is something called roller coaster or ride bombing your park. So what you want to do is build a very high excitement and high thrill ride. Uh, very simple, so don't make it too long or too big because you do need to buy, you know, build it and um, have enough money left over to keep doing that. So either you can build it in the park, or you, if you have the roller coaster tycoon toolkit, you can pre-build it, save the template, and load it up in the game. So the first thing you want to do is load the level, find which coasters are available and then go into the toolkit and build an extreme version of that ride and then save the template and then go back into the park start it brand new and what you're gonna do is you're gonna spam your park with that particular ride so what you so what you'll do is you'll first um, build one version of that ride into your park and then you're gonna run it through the maintenance mode so it goes around the track a couple of times so you get the rating and that registers with the game so once that's registered you'll see you can then go into the park value screen of the game and you'll see it go up or down or adjust accordingly if you see it go in up enough you'll know that okay well you know if you go from a hundred thousand to a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar park value then you just need to build four or five um, copies of that ride and just fast forward to the park so you get through it as fast as possible. So what you're going to do, let's, so let's say in, so in the case of what I did, I built one of the rides, ran it through the maintenance mode. And then you know, what you're going to do after that is you're going to close the ride. So that way, though, you don't get the pop up for um, the ride being closed, people not being able to get on, no lanes or anything like that. But you do trigger the uh, ride stats in order to get the park value increase. And also that way the ride doesn't break down and ultimately start losing its value. So by doing that, you get the value, but you don't, or you get the positive, but you don't get the negative. Uh, once you, that happens, once you, and then you, you can keep increasing the amount of funding that you get or that you're borrowing until you've built out the ride a few times. Um, you can pace yourself if you want. So um, if you want to, you know, build a ride and then wait till you recap, recoup some of the money and then build another one and keep doing that. You can do that. You might cut it close. So what I did is you build it as many as you can right off the bat and then work on paying down the, your loan. So that way you're making money, building food stalls, um, building side rides and things like that to keep your guests happy and keep all the other tests um, normal. Um, I don't know how much that affects the park value, but you know, keep it, you know, keep, as long as you have people coming in and spending money in the park, you're going to get money to build the same coaster over and over. So 
once you have, you know, you know, once you're done through your one or your two, you'll have enough money so you can build more rides and get over to the par value threshold. And once you do that, you're about all done. And like for this video, it was really short because I kept fast forwarding through a lot of it. You know, build a ride, recoup money, build a ride again, recoup the money and all that. And while I'm doing that, I'm also um, doing the maintenance mode, making sure that um, I'm getting the stats and the park value is actually increasing. I did also build out um, additional foot paths and entryways. The entryways are optional, but if you build out the pathways, then that way, when you, if you have more people in the park, they have places to go and they all fit so you can have more people spending money and all that. So, so I recommend doing things like that, but um, that's one of those things that worked in this park. Um, one, I did The video that I watched did say that it should work in general for other parks as well. So I've been trying it in the last park in the in the graphite group um, set of parks and it didn't seem to work so I might give that one more shot or I might try it in one of the other park value parks to see if I can get it to work where I find a ride that is supposed to work, um, build a simple high thrill ride and see if I can beat the park value in that and finish some of the off finish off some of those other levels. So I'm not gonna say that it works for every level, even though it does look like based on reading online and watching different videos that it's supposed to work. But at least for Diamond Heist, this is a thing that will that should work for everybody. So um, you can follow along in the video that I made or that I shared on YouTube. Um, and to round it out, I did have a chance to play a level of Pirate Doom. So this was the Cantina level. Overall, it was pretty interesting. Um, had a chance to get through it, beat the demons, and you know, mess with the switches and all that. So overall, pretty good. Not too difficult. I did like the little showcase style thing where you push the button and different things teleport in. So um, I thought that was interesting and um, all that. So st still a fun game. So I'm going to start getting back into that. that um, I, st I did start playing the next level as well, which looks like it's going to be a circus level. Um, I tried to get through as fast as I can, but I ended up uh, mismanaging my health and dying. So I'm going to work my way through that, but that'll be the next gameplay for that. So um, not much to say otherwise there, aside, aside from it is a fun mod, so look out for that um, gameplay resuming now that I'm starting to feel mostly better and I'm going to have more... Um, um, more time and energy to play play those games. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, all the social media links are linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. So the Patreon is patreon.com slash patelin01 for past episodes. Uh, or sign up patreon.com slash patelin01 for early access to the podcast and add free version of it, a link to the YouTube version if you prefer the podcast up on YouTube and all of that good stuff. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.